Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, the challenger wearing white and officially weighing in at 146 pounds. His professional record, 59 victories, including 38 wins by knockout, seven defeats and two draws. He's a future Hall of Fame fighter, the 10-time world champion, four-time welterweight champion of the world from Sarangani province, the Philippines, the fighting legend of the Philippines, Manny Pacman. And fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with yellow, official weight, 146.7 pounds. His professional record, 39 victories. 36 of those 39 wins by knockout. With four defeats, he is one of the greatest knockout punchers in welterweight championship history. Thomas y Caballeros de Cruz Luchuba, Argentina, the reigning, defending, WBA welterweight champion of the world, Lucas the Machina Matisse. Okay, Lucas Manning, trunks are good on both sides. Anything on the waist is considered a low blow. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Again, I want to caution you to keep this fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say, you must obey. Good luck, touch them up, and God bless. Touch them up. Brennan Spiker. The crowd has come alive. There's Lucas Matisse. 36 of his 39 professional fights have been won by knockout. Does this man still possess the Manny magic, or will Malaysia be the final stop of Pacquiao's legendary career? Here we go, Pac-Man versus the machine for the WBA World Welterweight Championship. Two of Matisse's four professional losses have come to South Pauls, Chris. Yeah, uh, Zab Judah and uh, Devin Alexander back in the 140 pound division. But Matisse dropped both of them in those fights. Pacquiao said, listen, Matisse's going to come to me. I don't have to go to him. Both men predicting knockout tonight, even though Pacquiao hasn't won by stoppage in nine years. He beat Miguel Cotto back in 2009. One, two there from Matisse. Pacquiao's landed a couple right hand early that seemed to shake Matisse up a little. Pacquiao said he was confident he could knock out Matisse because he feels that Matisse is coming up in weight, that he's just as big and just as strong as the machine. But a lot of fighters who've gone into fights against the Argentinian with that mentality end up on their backs. But Pacquiao's been in there with some of the biggest and the best in the world as he's coming forward now, Chris. Yeah, Pacquiao seems to be uh, controlling the pace right now and where the fight is fought. He's definitely the ring general in there at the moment. Good body work there by Pacquiao. And a good jab, a stiff one for Matisse. Surprised to see Pacquiao fighting with such flat feet. He's really walking Matisse down. He didn't fear Matisse's power at all. At least that's what he told us in the fighter meeting. He's not concerned about him, but he's been in there with Miguel Cotto. He's been in there with Margarito. Some big, heavy, punching welterweights. Big guys with heavy punches. Matisse rarely in a boring fight. In fact, he was in a 2014 fight of the year against John Molina Jr. A fight he won by 11th round knockout. In the two Southpaw losses that Matisse has on his record, which are both very controversial, um, he started slow. 
He lost a lot of the early rounds and had to come back to, to score knockdowns and to, to fight hard in, toward the end of the fight. Like you said, usually Pacquiao's a lot more on his toes, bouncing in and out. Not so far in this fight. No, I expected him to use a lot more footwork to stay away from Matisse's power, but uh, he's not giving Matisse much respect at this point. Fernandez, how will that affect things in your opinion, Chris? You know, I don't think it's going to have much of an effect unless this fight goes late and becomes a, a, a really competitive bout. Um, you know, the, the work has been done. Google was always in camp with Pacquiao. Freddie Roach was in Pacquiao's corner in his last fight. Of course, that was a losing effort, very controversially so, to Jeff Horn. And then really never told Freddie Roach that he was quote unquote fired or that he wasn't using him again. He just kind of moved on to Boo Boy. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I was surprised that to hear that. Nice shot there from He thought Matisse was going to come to him, but it's Pacquiao pushing the pace, as he so often has done in his star-studded career. Matisse's team did allude to his boxing skills, and that he they was going to use more of his actual boxing instead of brawling in this fight. Matisse said he used to be more of a boxer, but got some, some bad decisions that didn't go his way. He said, I had to change my style. I don't want it to go to the judges anymore. Neither one of these guys seem like they want this fight to go the distance anyway. Finally, this crowd has settled in a little bit here. Halfway through round two, scheduled for 12. There's a nice little right hand from Pacquiao. Pacquiao is just showing a very effective right jab. There's a jab from Matisse. Straight left, that's the punch that Diaz warned Matisse about in the corner. The thing about fighting Pacquiao is every time you throw a punch, you leave an opening. And he's so good at using his speed and his timing to get there. When you expect, when you think you're, you're launching an attack, you're actually already getting countered. There's a counter left from Matisse. He didn't have a lot behind it. Good right hand from Matisse. Pacquiao fighting for the first time here in Malaysia. This is the biggest sporting event this country may have ever seen since 1975 when Muhammad Ali defended his world title here. The story of, of Benny Pacquiao's recent success in this fight has been the right hand. He's been landing nice left ho uh, right hooks and, and jabs over the top. Matisse, you see a nice shot there, right there, right on the jaw, over the jab of balance and power off quite a bit. This is Matisse's third fight at welterweight. He said his first one was a little awkward, second one settled in more, and now claims that he is a true welterweight now in every sense of the word. Still being cautious. He has a dangerous man in front of him. Matisse showing no signs of life right now. Backpedaling. Pacquiao had Jeff Horn in a lot of trouble in his last fight in round nine. Couldn't close the show. Vowed to do so tonight if he got Matisse in trouble. A lot of 
of people have written Pacquiao off, said he's too old, should have retired, shouldn't be doing this anymore. But right now, Chris, he looks like a man reinvented. Yeah, it's making people eat their words on that one, that's for sure. That was a beautifully timed left uppercut off the jab. He was setting Matisse up with that right jab for the left hand the whole time. Pacquiao with his trademark smashing of the gloves together to pump himself up. Matisse still looks like he's in a bit of trouble. Caught a nice right hook there. Matisse on unsteady feet for sure. Less than a minute to go here in round three. It's been all Manny so far. Good body work there by Pacquiao. Coming back with that left uppercut again. You can see Manny's using that right jab to walk Matisse into his left hand. Matisse survived the storm here as he throws a right hand. It certainly seems so, but with Pacquiao, you're in a ring with that man, you're never safe. Pacquiao needs to be careful as well. He's walking into the power hand of Matisse, that right hand, looking to set up that left hand. Matisse's used to getting up off the canvas to win fights. He's done it several times before. Let's see if he can find himself here between... All right, let's take a look at this knockdown here. You see Manny Pacquiao using his right hook to, to slide that left uppercut right through the guard of Matisse. He'd been using that right hand the first two rounds, set Matisse up perfectly. He ducks to his left, eats that uppercut, gets put on the seat of his pants. Beautiful shot. Didn't see it coming. As I always say, the punch you don't see is the one that hurts you the most. Pacquiao go right after him again, or does he say, hey, he, he weathered the storm, let me just kind of settle in a little bit? I say he goes right back to the drawing board. Go back to that right hand, keep using the jab and hook over the top, set it up again. And for Matisse, what now? Matisse needs to step on the gas pedal now. He's got to look to counter with that right hand. He's got to straighten that thing out and land some power to get some respect. We haven't seen any of that power from Matisse so far. That power that's given him 36 knockouts and 39 wins. You know, Matisse is a puncher, and most of the time a puncher needs to be set to deliver that power. Manny doesn't allow you to do that. He keeps that right jab on you. He's changing angles constantly, spinning out, making you miss. He caught Matisse with a right hand as the Argentinian came inside. That backs him up with the left. Who would have thought that Pacquiao would be the boss in there tonight, moving Matisse wherever he wants him? Well, Manny Pacquiao did, that's for sure. He said it in the, in the fighter meeting. He's having his way here, really really picking his spots, using that right hand. Love the use of the right jab. This crowd sensing something special is about to happen again. As Matisse goes down to the body. Chris, you felt Pacquiao's power four years ago in the Cal China. How hard can he hit? You know, there's a lot of talk about him not taking his power because he hasn't scored a knockout in a long time. That's not the case. He always had the power. He still had the power. I felt his power when we were fighting. Um, he's a very, very good puncher. That's not what he, what he stops guys with. It's, it's, it's combinations. That's what he's most known for, being a, a relentless power, punching with, power puncher with speed. We haven't seen as much of that relentless speed uh, as he's moved up in weight, but he still has that power. Good right right hand there. First one of the fight that lands for Matisse. And, that, and that's the punch that Matisse needs to land. A straight right hand, right down the middle, right on the chin. Just the way Canizales did in the uh, in the fight with Lubin. Good jab there from Pacquiao. So round four has certainly gone better for Matisse, but still not showing what he wants to show. And that's being able to bully Manny around a little bit. Matisse looking very uncertain right now. Every time he throws a punch. We're going to see uh, 
Matisse land that straight right hand, which I was saying is going to be his key to victory. And then we see uh, Manny Pacquiao's best punch here. Straight left hand to the body there, and then one up top. And then we've got another left hand that Pacquiao landed later in the round. Slips, throws his combination, and then looking to set up that left hand again. As Matisse jab, Pacquiao slips his head to the outside, shoots the straight left hand down. Talk about a complete 180. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's come out. He's been walking his man down since round number one. He's been utilizing his jab, setting him up. Um, honestly, he's putting, putting Matisse where he wants him. Very different than a counterfighter like you said he was going to do. And Boo Boy Fernandez, as you can hear from our translator, saying, don't counterpunch, you be first. Nice left. Started with a jab. Things going about as well as they possibly could so far for the 39-year-old from the Philippines. Good jab there from Matisse. Pacquiao still needs to be cautious. He's a man that is dangerous for all 12 rounds. Pacquiao's answering everything at this point. Matisse has been hit by some of the hardest punchers out there. Victor Postal, Ruslan Provodnikov, Danny Garcia. It seems that maybe Pacquiao's power is different than all those guys. There you go. Matisse needs to get loose there. Get his, get his shoulder rhythm going, get his upper body. Level change, let that right hand go. Put your hand, hand. He seems Put to be letting... Hand. Manny dictate the pace and is really throwing off his rhythm. Yeah, he's never gotten comfortable. Starting to feel a little bit more so here in the round in round five head, or so head, it seems. We got a clash of heads. Two of them already. Okay, here you go. The referee Kenny Bayless warning both fighters. There you go. Now you're seeing Matisse get a little bit looser. That's one thing about uh, Manny Pacquiao would be from my, myself from being in the room with him. He's very good at breaking up your rhythm. You find your rhythm and then boom, he pops you with a shot, changes an angle, you gotta start over. It seems like Matisse is experiencing that right now. Oh, and a left hand, a good one there for Lucas Matisse. It was a jab, and it landed right on the butt. And there's a the right hand. Finally, Matisse finding some success. The best round so far for Matisse. Not sure what it takes the I believe it was a right hook off of Manny's jab. Lands the jab there, flicks another jab, and wings a right hook over the top. Slicing right hook, seemed to just nick Matisse under the eye. One more look here. Okay, yeah, it, 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 it's shot in the temple. A lot of times that can, that can take your, your equilibrium, take your legs away from you. Matisse may have fit for him to take a knee there and recover. Either way, Matisse's been down twice, and he's already in the I need a knockout to get a win type of territory. Entering round six here, scheduled for 12, the WBA welterweight championship of the world on the low line. Blow. And a Very low, low blow. Very low. Although he looks very steady on his legs, even in the beginning of this round, so. Up, up, up. Well, Matisse told us this will not go the distance, and he looks like he's going to be right. 
but it may not be him that gets the win. Oh, good right hook there again. Nice counter by Danny Parker. You can sense the, I don't know if it's fear, but the concern Matisse has for Pacquiao's power as soon as he throws a punch. Not only does he cover up Chris, but he's taking steps backwards. Well, he's getting hit with everything at this point. Manny is, is, is landing the jab, the straight left hand, the right hook. And he's really been able to blunt the power of Matisse. Everything coming up roses so far for Pac-Man. But Pacquiao's doing it in a very controlled manner. He's not getting reckless like he was when he was fighting uh, Marquez that fateful fourth time before he got knocked out. Staying very composed, using his right hand. Making Matisse miss and reach. Oh, Matisse caught him there. But Pacquiao handled it very well. And it's still coming forward. That was one thing I was very surprised with when I fought Manny, that his defense is, is as good as it is. He's very, very good at changing his range and making you miss and also reach. And now, just like he did in the last round, Matisse starting to land some punches. But that's when Pacquiao caught him and sent him down to the canvas again. Matisse may, may be better off just going for broke. Let his hands go, plant his feet, throw some power shots. Maybe catch um, Pacquiao as he's coming in. Couple jabs there for Matisse. Still trying to find his rhythm. Six rounds into the fight. Pacquiao found his rhythm playing the guitar in the locker room before this fight even started. He was so relaxed and he's carried that into this fight. There's a stiff jab from Matisse. Take a look back at that low blow, Chris, that gave Matisse some very much needed seconds to break. Yeah, uh, Matisse was trying to counter underneath one of the shots of, of Manny Pac, one of his combinations, hit him uh, on the belt line. It was pretty low. Those shots that, that hit kind of like the hip area are very. So we have reached the halfway point of this fight, and Pacquiao has seemingly won every round, which includes two knockdowns. Tise called just stepping into the ring against Pacquiao, a dream come true, said it was a great honor, but said I will not respect him at all once the bell rings. Pacquiao has earned some respect from Matisse tonight. I would certainly say so. And again with those patented combinations, Pacquiao walks forward. with a big shot and he has to start over. And that uppercut has been one of the best punches in the fight for Pacquiao. He's landed it multiple times. If you notice, when Manny throws his right hand, Matisse has the tendency to dip to his right and forward. That's why that left uppercut has been landing so cleanly for Pacquiao. And here he does it again. Manny's walking him into that shot with his right hand. He's almost 40, Chris. 
but still, those hands are lightning quick. Still has the speed, still has his reaction. His footwork is still there. That was the one thing about the, the Jeff Horn fight. He showed good footwork, he showed boxing skills. Man still has a lot of fight left in him. Now, I will say, I saw uh, Manny Pacquiao firsthand eating a steak uh, the day before the weigh-in, um, which I don't know if not, but it, it, it seems to be paying off today because he's looking very strong in there. Oh. <laughs> savvy the entire time. Very, very impressive performance. He made Lucas Matisse look very, very ordinary tonight. He looked pedestrian. He, did, he could never get anything going. And that was because of that man right there, Manny Pacquiao. Muhammad Ali defended his World Heavyweight Championship in Malaysia back in 1975. Manny Pacquiao has won his 11th world title in Malaysia here in 2018. As for Lucas Matisse, what a disappointing performance for him. He was very confident, thought that he could bully Manny around, thought he'd put him on the canvas, but instead it was Manny Pacquiao who dropped the Argentinian three different times, and Kenny Bayless had seen enough. You know, uh, Matisse had spit out his mouthpiece during Kenny Bayless's count, and I think that's what signaled Bayless to stop the fight. Um, generally, when a guy spits his mouth, he's out, he doesn't really be there anymore. So what next for Randy Pacquiao now, Chris? Who does he fight next? Because you know after this performance, he's going to want to get right back in there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And he's going to want a top fighter. Honestly, I'd like to see the Lomachenko fight. I think that that's, a, uh, that's an interesting matchup. Um, and I think that you know, Manny being the bigger guy and Lomachenko coming up, um, I think that makes that for makes that makes that an exciting, exciting fight. He's reignited the Pacquiao freight train, that's for sure. He wants big fights, he wants big fighters, and after this performance, who's gonna say no? I think we'll see exactly what we've been seeing all night. Manny Pacquiao using the right jab. Uh, Lucas Matisse dipping forward into his right, right into the left uppercut, timed perfectly by Manny Pacquiao. And see there, that's where he spit out that mouthpiece, and that's exactly what Kenny Bailey said. This fight's over. So he's the right hook, and then the left hook. And it doesn't come out right away. It wasn't because of the punch. He just yep. spits it there out. There it is. Yep, at five, he spit it out. And take Kenny Bailey, as soon as he spit it out, he said, this, this fight's over. Again, walking Matisse into that left hand, and he threw it right at the middle. It wasn't the hardest shot that he got hit with tonight, but it was right on the money. The, the rumors of his demise have been greatly exaggerated. Manny Pacquiao back on top with a welterweight championship about to be put around his waist. Let's send it into the ring now and Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, referee Kenny Bayless calls a halt to the contest following the knockdown. The official time, two minutes. 43 seconds, round number seven. The winner by TKO victory, 
And now, once again, he is the world away champion of the world, the fighting pride of the Philippines, Manny!